Hello, Facebook, Pastor Ed and Jamie and Jandika, uh, Warden Community Church, and uh, thank you for joining us for our online Monday, Thursday service. Just a little thought for you. Let me read something. Uh, today's Monday, Thursday. Where do we get that name? The name Monday comes from the Latin word mandatum, which means command. Today's the day that we remember Jesus' commands on the day before he died. The first command is that we would love one another. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You are also to love one another. Jesus also commanded that we continue to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup. Today, we remember the Lord's commands and celebrate his supper. We also look ahead to the love he showed for us on the following day as he laid down his life to save us. We have a call to worship that we're going to do just to get us in the right frame of mind and then we will uh, sing some hymns and share some scriptures. Praise the Lord, you who are God's servants. Praise, Praise the name of the Lord. Lord. May, May God's, God's name be blessed, blessed from now on and forever. forever. Wherever the sun shines, from dawn until dusk, let God's name be praised. We are, we are called, called together, together to, to be, be with the Lord in praise. If you have uh, hymns for the pilgrim people at home, or you can look it up on hymnary.org, we are going to be singing Behold the Wood, number 180, and we'll sing just the first two verses to get us started. Let me grab my guitar. Jamie, you could go ahead and play your intro okay. while we're while I'm doing this, and then I'll join you in just a moment. readings tonight are going to be from Mark chapter 14. I'll start us off and we'll look at verses 26 through 31, the shadow of denial. Mark 14, 26, 31. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter declared, even if all fall away, I will not. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you will yourself disown me three times. But Peter insisted, 
emphatically. Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. Now, Jamie, I have listed here Jamie's choice. What would you like to... 184, were you 184, there? 184, were you there? Verses 1, 2, and 6. Verses 1, 2, and 6. Okay, this is an E-flat. Yes. I'm going to cheat. Okay. Use that good old K-flat. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Jamie, would you read for us verses 32 to 42, <clears throat> the shadow of sorrow? They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Once more, he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough! The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Uh, now we'll be singing... Alas, and did my Savior bleed, number 186. Number 186, Catherine um, Shipley is looking these up and posting the <laughs> lyrics really quickly, so that's wonderful. Thank you, Catherine. Um, if you, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I've lost my train of thought for a moment. I had my guitar chords written, and remember, you said you found the... Um, that was this one. Right. Yeah, the guitar, guitar chords were guitar. also with that? Um, was that back there? Do you see those? Yes. 
boy, it sure is a good thing that we're like highly professional people <laughs> and have all of this stuff figured out ahead of time. Right. So uh, let's do uh, Alas and Did My Savior Bleed, uh, number 186. Three, four times, remember? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Jandica, if I could have you read verses 46 through 52, the shadow of desertion, and then we'll uh, have communion together. Going, excuse me. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. And now we're going to celebrate communion together. We've tried to be very simple. Um, we have uh, a little bit of bread. We have a little bit of grape juice. Uh, this grape juice, by the way, is not store-bought. This is from Gordy Edwards. Uh, he has grapes growing in his backyard. And one day he showed up on my doorstep with two huge flats of grapes. And we processed and processed and processed and processed, and we have jars and jars and jars and jars of homemade grape juice. And it's incredibly sweet. So, if you would hand me the bread. There we go. Let's pray together. Lord God, even though we can't all be together on this evening, Monday, Thursday, we pray, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts, that you would draw us together, that, that God, you would be our sufficiency, because so many of us, I, I know I am, are struggling with this forced separation. And while I'm blessed that I'm able to be here with my family, um, I miss the rest of my church family, something awful. And so, Lord, we pray that that through this simple time, we would be reminded of your goodness and your care for us, mm -hmm. and that you would draw us together even though we can't be physically in the same place. Help us to remember you this evening. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and broke it and said, This Bread is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we share bread with one another. We share what we have with one another, even if we're not able to be in the same place. So I hope you have your bread handy where you are. And if not, I will ask you to mentally and spiritually join us in this time. So I'm going to take this bread and break it into a few smaller pieces and share. This is the body of Christ 
given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Let's pray together. Lord God, we remember what you have done for us. We are doing our best to continue to love and to continue to share and to continue this new covenant symbol that you've given us. We remember and we join you in this process. We pray in your name, Jesus. Let me do that. <laughs> That's my thing. That's your thing, yes. Okay, so this very big cup um, was given to me by the wonderful people at First Presbyterian Church when I... Um, in Snohomish. Um, in, Snohomish. Yes, First Presbyterian Church in Snohomish um, as I uh, received the call to this church and was going to, to this church in Warden. And they knew I was going to be ordained and so they purchased this very large communion cup for me and this is a mason jar full of gordy's grape juice um actually about half of gordy's grape juice and half water because it's really 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 <laughs> sweet it's, it's like drinking syrup <laughs> very ordinary everyday plain stuff mm -hmm. which is what jesus must have had so let's pray lord god we understand that the cup is something that ideally is to be shared all over the world and so we ask that you participate in this process that you would draw us to yourself using simple elements so that we would be reminded of of a simple faith trust in you we pray this in jesus name amen on the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took the cup and filling it, he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. And as often as you drink it, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So, we proclaim that we belong to Jesus. We proclaim that he took our place on the cross and that he would have done so even if it were any single one of us. His blood on our behalf. Receive the blood of Christ. Let's pray one more time. Lord, we pray for those people who are watching, who are participating in this distant communion, which seems to be a contradiction in terms. But it's not about being in the same place. It's about being in the same family. You have brought us together in your faith. You have called us to be a part of your family, and we're very grateful for that. Feed our souls. Whether we have bread and juice or any other elements, feed our souls today. We ask it in your name, Jesus. Amen. And now I'm going to read from uh, Mark 14, verses 43 to 45, the shadow of betrayal. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. We'll now sing verses 5 and 6 of Behold the Wood. That's number 180.
And now our final reading will be from Mark 14, verses 53 to 50. <clears throat> they took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, elders, and the teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest, there he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this man-made temple and in three days build another not made by man. Yet even then their testimony did not agree. And then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus. And you will see the Son of Man sit at the right hand of the mighty one and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses, he asked. You've heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him worthy of death. And then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists and said, prophesy. And the guards took him and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You were also there with that Nazarene Jesus, she said, but he denied it. I don't know or understand what you were talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, this fellow was one of them, and again he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin reached a decision. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. The chief priest accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. 
Now it was the custom at the feast to release a prisoner whom the people had requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call king of the Jews? Pilate asked him. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. At this point in our service, if you were here, we would strip the sanctuary of all of its trappings. The flags are taken out. The Bible is taken away from the pulpit, and all of our pretty hangings are, are removed. Jamie has already done that. Here we have an empty pulpit, or an empty lectern, no flags. We are finding ways to be God's people in these unusual times. And as we are remembering what Jesus asked us to remember, let us do what we can to open our hearts and minds and be drawn closer to him. Let's close in prayer. Father God, you do in fact know what you're doing. I had a phone call from one of our church members today, and they were very upset. They really wanted us to, to gather together for Easter Sunday. And we're just not going to be able to gather the way we would ideally like to do. There's no sunrise service. There's no Easter breakfast that, that we uh, walk into the church building and, and smell the wonderful cooking that the, the Shuler family often does. All of the trappings that we're used to as a part of celebrating Holy Week and Resurrection Sunday are gone. It's very much like the first Monday, Thursday. It's very much like the first Holy Week. Full of a lot of uncertainty. Full of a lot of people who are hunkered down because they're, they're staying away. They're, they're a little uncertain as to what's going on. And yet, Lord, we have the advantage of knowing that it may seem like a long, terrible weekend is ahead of us. We know that Sunday is coming. Be with us this evening and the rest of the weekend as we feel this weight of waiting. Be with us, Lord, and help us to remember you in all things. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us, everyone. I pray that you have a blessed weekend and that you join us uh, online uh, for our celebration of Resurrection Sunday. God's blessings to you.